Yes. Okay, good morning, everyone. We'll call the uh, development committee meeting of August 1st to order and a roll call, please. Member Krajewski? Here. Member Chaplin? Here. Member Gustin? Here. Member Ozog? Member Rutledge? Here. Chair Tornatori? Here. And we have a quorum. Under Chairman's remarks, I just wanted to briefly state we, a couple of weeks ago we talked about possibly doing a uh, ordinance for uh, grass or grass that had uh, grown out of control in the eyes of some people. Um, council has given me uh, ILCS 55 1099 county, under the county's code, where um, we do have a provision that the county board can't provide for cutting of weeds on lots and subdivisions uh, in uh, counties of more than 3 million, of which we, or I'm sorry, less than 3 million, of which we are with a notice to be sent at least 15 days to the property owner. A lien can be placed on the property. Uh, a lot of this we already do through the townships. So essentially we have a mechanism for that in place. So I don't know that we need to necessarily um, rewrite uh, the code, uh, but I will defer to the committee if we feel like we need to do anything. In addition to that, just thought I'd play that. And thank you to, to, uh, uh, to Nick. Uh, moving on to public comment, we have um, three people who are here to publicly comment, as well as uh, one uh, electronically. Uh, the one electronically is from Joseph Pizzuto from Burr Ridge. It's regarding uh, the Manlin zoning petition uh, that will be entered into the record as we do with all of our electronic uh, comments. Uh, first up, we have Ray Chenier. Shenudo. Is it Shenudo? Okay, and this is regarding, uh, not sure which one, got a number here, but we'll, we'll take a look at it. it looks like, uh, okay. Uh, public comments limited to three minutes, a uh, total of 30 minutes um, in its entirety. Uh, no, uh, no testimony can be taken in the public comment portion, but we're certainly uh, willing and uh, ready to listen to any comment you may have. So if you want to, step up so that we can see you sure yes. so commenting on zoning uh two three dash zero 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 two one um i'm surprised that the zoning hearing offers recommending to deny um the variation there is kind of incorrect we're not reducing any lot sizes it seems the way that the lot was oriented from the very beginning is incorrect so it's the same exact parcel size that's divided but the orientation rather than vertically is horizontally so we're recommending actually that the um, that what we're seeking be approved we're not changing any lot dimensions whatsoever but rather um, to correct an offset rather than have two narrow extremely long lots to more shape them the other way and square them out a little bit um, if I'm able, to, I don't know if there's a way to pull up the uh, the survey on the screen and share what I'm saying. Uh, Again, we're not taking any new testimony, so just whatever your comment is regarding it. Sir. Okay, yeah, there, there's no two testimony, but the way the lots are oriented uh, should be the frontage along 90th Street as the existing home is there with the frontage along 90th. If it's... Uh, the way it's done along Vine Street gives you two extremely narrow, extremely uh, deep lots, and the, it should be reoriented the other way. So we're not asking for any variances or changes or uh, accommodations for lot size. We're asking for it to be laid out the way it probably should have been laid out from the very beginning. I, I request if anyone is able to look at the survey, they look at it in order to understand what I'm talking about. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mike Roth. Yes. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, morning. members of the committee. Uh, my name is Mike Roth. I'm the attorney for the petitioner in 6F, which is uh, management. Uh, the matter was before the ZBA on July 13th and received the unanimous recommendation of approval. Uh, uh, basically, your, your, your report from the ZBA and the staff is very thorough. I have nothing really to add, only to emphasize that. Uh, this is a, a parcel of property that is legal not conforming and it's our effort. Uh, there are two existing buildings. Uh, the, the, the petitioner does not plan to make any changes whatsoever with regards to the improvements on the site. 
um, but it's legal not conforming. Uh, the two buildings he'd like to uh, sell um, them to separate owners who have been there for a long time. And uh, this is a way, this request for conditional use is a way to uh, make it legal. Um, the, the exceptions that are noted in, in, in the report uh, are existing conditions. And uh, once the site is divided, the buildings are closer than would be allowed otherwise. Uh, but again, the, the effort here is not to uh, change anything. And certainly the uh, petitioner agrees to all the conditions that are set forth in the report. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to try to answer them. Uh, otherwise, I appreciate your approval. Thanks. Thank you. Chairman? There you no, we don't take questions. Oh, he had time. asked if there was a question. I just had one. Oh, well, we, we'll hold it till we get there. Um, last, uh, Mike, so I'll select. I would just reiterate the same thing that my general manager said about the uh, lot six. They're configured with an east west configuration that are a long and narrow versus a north south configuration, which would make them close to being square, uh, which would make them uh, more desirable and more marketable uh, for someone to build uh, a new house on that. So, the, the purpose of having a vacant lot is to have more homes so you get more tax. That's really a big thing. It's, it'll be harder. the uh, public comment portion of the meeting. We'll move on to uh, approval of the minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes on July 11th. Any additions, corrections, or deletions? Hearing none, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed, the minutes are approved. Moving on to regulatory, uh, item 6A, 23-2497. I'll entertain a motion to approve DSC 23-5, the Abidaya Retreat Center wedding to approve a special event action item. So motions or a second? Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Moving on to item 6B. I'll entertain a motion to approve DC 031-23, zoning 2321. Mailing in, this is the zoning hearing officer's recommendation to deny a variation to reduce the required lot width from 165 feet to approximately 145.3 for lot one and 145.3 for lot two. And a variation to reduce the required lot size from the required 100,000 square feet to approximately 34,634 square feet for lot one and 34,632 square feet for lot two. This is a zoning hearing officer's denial. We have the motion in the affirmative. So a yes vote will be an overturning of the zoning hearing officer's recommendation. We have a motion in a second. Any questions or comments? Mr. Kuchuski. Yeah, thank you. So I got a call, um, actually somebody called me regarding this issue a few weeks ago uh, because I must have reached out to Mayor Grasso because the mayor uh, referred him to me because it was an issue with the county. Um, so I worked with Paul Haas trying to understand this issue because I couldn't figure out why it was denied. And my understanding, Paul, is what he told me at least, that we've approved these things all around the county and in other instances. Yes. Pretty much. Yes. All the time. Yes. Right? And so I was trying to figure out how that was denied from the zoning officer. And, you know, I think the only thing I could come up with in talking to Paul was just there was a few neighbors upset, but it was um, the plan planning person from the village of Fur Ridge that really was not for this. There was, a, there was a concern from the village of Burr Ridge planning department that, that while he didn't object to the reconfigurations of the lot, there was a concern from the village of Burr Ridge that this was an attempt to, uh, to obfuscate the ability of uh, Burr Ridge's um, uh, Vine Street uh, water hookup plan, and that this was an attempt by the developer to not hook up to the city of Burr Ridge water. But in terms of the reconfiguration, Burr Ridge didn't have a problem with it. So, I mean, I, I, and I think that's probably why the zoning officer denied it, but I, I mean, we've done this all over the county. I think you'd probably say we should probably approve it um, based on what we've done in the past, but I'm supporting it well, I've made a motion to support it, but I just don't see how we can deny it. Well, we can, but if you don't wish to, it's up to you. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I just, I, well, I, 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 I don't. I'm reading the standards and I'm, I'm, no, I'm not I, sure. I understand. I, it's just, it's I was trying to find out what he relied on to deny it. And 
Possibly. Well, I'm looking at the letter from Burr Ridge, it's uh, their their concern is uh, to avoid payment of the Vine Street water capture fee. I think yeah. is their concern, and I don't I'm know whether sure. that's the intention or not. But but I'm not sure that's the reason. And I did Burr call, Ridge and I did call Mayor Grasso back and told him that it was actually you know to be. He was told it was Paul Austin to pull the problem up. And I said, I think it's your planning department, so you might want to look at that. But yeah, I think it has to do with more of a hookup of water than the, this, which I don't think is the reason to deny. And we did have a uh, the electronic uh, all the comment was an objection to this. Yeah, I know a couple of neighbors came out at the, at the uh, period. Okay, right. any other questions uh, on this matter? Uh, I'm just curious probably. that, so they're saying that now the lot sizes if they change will be non-conforming, um, but weren't they already? I mean, if we're still talking the same square footage on these two parcels, just changing the configuration, were, was there a variation or a conditional use earlier on this property? So when these, no, when the properties were originally divided back in the thirties, maybe early or late twenties, uh, uh, when I say 30, when I say 20, I'm talking about 1920. Yeah, yeah. The 20s. Um, they, that's how the, that's how the subdivision plan work and the zoning regulation of R1, which requires a minimum lot size of 100,000 square feet, minimum lot width of 165, didn't exist yet. So the lots are legal buildable lots. They are historic lots of record and they are grandfathered in legal nonconforming. When you reconfigure the lots, you lose that legal nonconforming and you have to get these variations. The lot sizes are going to be the same. The lot widths are going to be the same. They're just going to be reconfigured more vertical north and south versus horizontal east and west. That's the only difference. Um, I, I don't think you heard it from anybody here today, but the hardship and practical difficulty on this property is if you look on the exhibits that were tendered on page, um, four, I'm sorry, 30 and 31 of your agenda item, it shows that the vacant lot, which is to the north of the property that has the house on it, is heavily wooded and actually has a, in, uh, a rise of about seven feet. So um, by reconfiguring the lots, you actually have a much more uh, palatable, buildable area to build a new home. Whereas if you were to keep the existing configuration, you'd have to cut down a whole, almost a forest of trees and you'd have to regrade the property. Um, so reconfiguring the lots actually makes for a much more uh, suitable, buildable uh, area of land. And you're able to keep the, the, the trees in the backyard yeah. of both of these properties now. Yeah. From that aspect alone, I'd be with Brian on this. I would support allowing this to happen. Any other questions? Comments? Okay, we have a motion and a second uh, to approve it. Uh, roll call, please. And again, a yes vote overturns the zoning hearing officer's uh, recommendation to deny. Member Produsky? Aye. Member Chaplin? Aye. Member Gustin? Aye. Member Rutledge? Aye. Tory. Aye. And the motion carries. We'll be on to DCO 32-23. I'll entertain a motion to approve zoning 2328, Hades Place LLC, a zoning board of appeals recommendation to deny a variation to reduce the required parking spaces for a class A restaurant from 19 parking spaces to 10. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. For a second. Second. A motion and a second to approve. Again, a yes vote here would be uh, overturning the zoning board of appeals recommendation to deny. Any questions on this? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Paul. So it sounds like, from what I read the packet, that they're applying like restaurant. Um, they classified this as a restaurant, and that's why they need these parking spots. But this is really a tavern with video gaming. Is that what I understand? Yes. Okay. And um, I can't remember why it was classified that way, but in also order get, in order to get the gaming license. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. And then, um, but these businesses closed by five, some closed by six, so then they would have the whole parking lot that they could use for this establishment. Yeah. So okay. So yeah. Well, all the other businesses and their clothes are like what other shops? So then the. The parking lot will be available oh, for okay. for the uh, no, tavern. The gaming places. We're going to stop at five. No, 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 yeah, no. The other probably going to gear up. up and no, the uh, other. So, <laughs> so if they were a just a bar, they would be in. Um, they would have the um, spaces, and then also this is more of a takeout or something. I thought I read too, but yeah. 
Yeah, if they were um, just a tavern, or I believe that they would they would be okay with the ten spaces or or something like that. That's what I think I read in here. I, I printed up the sheets and I forgot them at home. But um, essentially, all you want, yeah, I was going to essentially say, the situation is, is that when the county when the county um, adopted video gaming. Mm -hmm. uh, it came with no rules or regulations, mm -hmm. and so the, we, we default to the state regulations, and the state code requires that you have to have a liquor license in order to game. <laughs> the only liquor license that is available for these types of facilities starts with a Class A or could be B or C restaurant. The Class A restaurant requires 15 parking spaces per thousand square feet of gross floor area. So um, it, the lack of any zoning regulation or building regulation or any regulation at all in the county for video gaming license, we have to default to the state and that's why the class A uh, license comes into play. Class A restaurant license kicks in the parking regulation. Because this is a strip shopping center, they have a limited number of legal parking spaces. And so technically they are, they are I believe 13 parking spaces short when you superimpose the other tenant spaces, which there are three, and then this one, um, they, they, they fall short of the parking requirements. Now the petitioner's presentation was that while we are technically a class A restaurant, we need X amount of parking spaces, which we don't have. Practically speaking, the way we will operate this class A restaurant with the video gaming machines, which incidentally the state only allows them to have up to six video gaming machines here, they can't have more than that, will be, here's how our operations work. Our operations usually start after one o'clock and run until two o'clock uh, in the morning. Uh, they were able to present some metrics that show the rest of the shopping center generally closes at six or seven o'clock at night. They had some people who didn't testify on their behalf, but did come from the shopping center indicated that what the petitioner was saying about how they operated their shopping center was in fact the case and they didn't have a problem with that. Um, but technically they don't meet the parking regulations and it's the parking regulations for which they're asking for variations from. Now, the reason the ZBA recommended to deny is that if the variations were granted and the um, video gaming facility failed and left the premises and a class A restaurant were to come back in, that class A restaurant would have the benefit of the parking variations. There was concern that they would operate differently than a gaming facility and would need more parking spaces for which they wouldn't have any practically, but technically they would have this variation. That was the concern of the ZBA. So the variation runs the plan yes, and stays that way. Is there, would, is there another way to give this petitioner the opportunity to do business like this as a conditional use type situation only is applied to this particular business that not run with the land? That is possible, but they chose the variation route. Um, so they could come back and ask for the conditional use and we could, in theory, if there was an appetite to approve this, they could approve it with a condition that it only be, the zoning relief only be for video gaming and if the video gaming were to go away, the conditional use expires. And, and while there's no objection from, I presume, I didn't see any from the current, the other tenants in the shopping center, because this runs with the land, this could impact future owners of those other businesses in perpetuity. So I, yeah, I guess my opinion that, well, I will <laughs> so, Okay, uh, yes. I think I agree with you, Sam, because um, if it's gonna be in perpetuity, this is a 50, almost a 50% reduction in parking spaces, which is a big ask, a big ask. Um, I agree, I think going a conditional use route that only goes with what they wanna do there, would be the way to go uh, cleanly, making it you know straightforward. We don't have uh, home rule, so it's not like we can, you know, we got to go with what the state requires, and that's pretty much what we have to work with. So I'm hesitant. I, I'm actually not going to vote for this. Yes, right. Yep. Thank you. Um, can we? Can we pretty much anything here? Can we do conditional use here? Uh, or does he have to go back through the process? Well, it's a little complicated. Um, <laughs> the, the, the statute allows uh, 
for lesser zoning relief. So their interpretation would have to be that a conditional use is lesser zoning relief than a variation. I don't know that we, we have ever really done that before. Uh, I think that would be a, a little bit of a, a problematic precedent. Um, I don't know that this is really lesser less zoning. Not, well, if it's not running with the land, I right. think it would be less. It seems to me it would be if, less. If there, was, if there was an appetite for that, I would suggest that maybe we table this, we consult with a state's attorney, bring that back to you. The state's attorney has already told me he doesn't. I would advise idea. against it. I mean, just no. back to the back back process. And then what I was going to say that two, there's two people on the board, one was gone, but I have some, the two did support it. So they found the evidence be. One of the things that the petitioner did submit um, was some compelling information that suggested that the facility that will have the gaming and the Class A restaurant in it, ultimately, after putting handicap accessible washroom facilities and some HVAC work in, will have about 800 square feet. And so from a practical standpoint, it would be very difficult for a another class a restaurant to come in and occupy that space now that is all speculation but that was what sort of compelled two of the zba members to say even though it's in perpetuity another class a restaurant coming in here would likely not ever occur that's why they voted in favor of it thank you so yes thank you sam so it sounds like there's just not enough spaces for this strip mall to begin with. Is that correct? Well, no, there is. Oh, okay. there, there are technically enough spaces for the strip mall. And one of the things that the petitioner, along with the two people, uh, two tenant, uh, other tenants, uh, indicated that practically uh, it seems to be working. Um, it's a matter of technically not working. And the big issue is, is that it's not just one or two technical parking spaces. It's I think it's 13. And that was really the issue for the ZBA. It, there is the possibility, an unlikely possibility, but still the possibility that another class A could come in there. And once that happened, it would be it would not only create a problem for class A restaurant, but the three other tenants. And any street parking available adjacent? It's, the side streets are residential streets yeah. and the other street is Route 38. So there's no off street parking. What's the practical difference for the petitioner between us denying this now or moving the table at, to a date, sir? Um, obviously, the petitioner would like to get going right away. He's got uh, three of these uh, in the county right now in a corporated area. Um, but they're tabling it uh, and even denying it sends a message to the petitioner that there is another avenue, this conditional use avenue, and they right. have the ability to, to go there. If we them. deny it, they have to restart the process. Right. If, if, if you want table it, they could bring it back under a different form. Right. But they have to go through the process completely, regardless, because they're seeking a separate use. Yeah. 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 So 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 well, our, you know, our, our point, our position, my position has always been, we, we don't want to be an impediment to people who want to do business we want to help them but there's another way to get what they want here without grabbing with both hands so to speak so i mean i, I i'm i would be not in favor of this i i understand why why it was denied because this could in theory last forever which would impact the rest of the the area for what it's worth so any other questions or comments regarding this Okay, so we have a motion and a second to approve it right now. Yeah, um, did, did you suggest that to them when they first came in that maybe do conditions? We did. Um, the, the person that's been doing this, uh, he's mm -hmm. been before the board before um, on, I think, uh, four other uh, of these facilities that had to come for zoning relief and two that were as of right. Um, for whatever reason, they felt the variation was the best way to go. Any other questions, comments? We have a motion and a second to approve it. A yes vote on the approval would be an overturning of the Zoning Board of Appeals recommendation to deny. Uh, roll call, please. Member Chaplin? No. Member Rutledge? No. Member Krajewski? No. Member Gus? No. Church Warner No. And the motion fails. <clears throat> Moving on to item 16. 
ABC O3323. Understand motion to approve zoning 2330 Bacchus. Zoning okay. hearing officer's recommendation to approve a variation to allow a six foot 100% closed privacy fence. Second. Yep. Yep. The motion and second. Any questions? Yeah. Number two. Thank you. So um, I'm just concerned about this 100% closed fence at the corner and reading about the blind spot and reading a letter in there that there was a concern. You know, Paul, we had this in my neighborhood and you came out, we had to have this fence changed. Um, so I'm just, like I said, the, that, I mean, that, I know this was approved by zoning, but I, I do have concerns looking at this map or the um, visual of it. Um, and those closed fences right at a corner like that, that does make me very uncomfortable. I'm trying to see where we are. Just pull it up again here. Uh, yeah, this is in District 2. So when I was looking at it on the map, you know, it's right a lot, right at the corner there of the street. Um, I don't know how. And somebody wrote that there's any blind spots when the car is turning out to Park Meadow, not sure if this is taken into consideration. Um, is there another neighbor, probably grandfathered in where there was a six foot privacy fence as large as a large blind spot on Arrow Court at Park Meadow? So um, do you know if that was discussed in the hearing or? Yes. Um, if you take a look at uh, number seven, um, in uh, page seven or 52 in the larger um, display. One of the reasons for the um, limitation of having a six foot tall fence in the corner side yard is typically where you have a corner side yard, the property behind you is a front yard and it takes its access um, uh, sort of perpendicular to one's backyard. In this case, the two properties that we're talking about, the, the subject property that wants to put the fence and the property behind it, they have they don't take their access points onto um, Park Meadow. They take them off the side streets. So there's no line of sight issue from someone behind this property okay. on getting onto Park Meadow. Okay. So that was the first thing consideration. Okay. The second thing that the, the, the hearing officer took into consideration is that if you see the way the property behind the subject property in Arrow Court, it sort of has a public right of way along Park Meadow that juts out further to the west. So the fence that is being proposed on Park Meadow for the subject property is actually going to be behind the house because Park Meadow right of way actually juts out further to the west. So if there's any concern, if there was any concern about um, uh, line of sight issues. The house on the property behind it is actually further in the line of sight than the proposed fence would be. So those two things were taken into consideration and it was determined that while there might be a blind spot on Arrow Court because of the way the right-of-way exists, that same right-of-way um, uh, actually um, is more acute to the subject property and actually doesn't create any blind spots okay. at all. So that's why the zoning hearing officer approved it. Does right. that make sense? It does make sense. Thank you. I feel much better. Uh, any other questions or comments on this? Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And the motion carries. Moving on to item 6E. ECO 34 23. I'll a motion to approve zoning 2331. So Okay. Is only hearing officer's recommendation to approve a conditional use to allow an existing structure to remain less than three feet from the interior of the property line. So motion and second. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. We got a DC 35 23. I'll entertain a motion to approve zoning 2340 JB Capital Management LLC. The zoning Board of Appeals recommendation to approve a conditional use with exceptions. For existing buildings and improvements, an exception of 40 feet required for a yard setback, an exception of 20 feet rear yard setback to uh, proposed I one to approximately 14 foot 53, an exception to allow parking, an existing 40 foot corner side yard setback, a proposed lot one, an exception to allow parking, an existing 20 feet interior side yard, a proposed lot one, an exception from 20 feet required interior yard setback, a proposed lot two. 
approximately 16.12 feet in exception from 20 feet required interior side yard setback. I'm proposed latitude approximately 15 feet. This is the zoning board of appeals vote. Five A's, uh, no nays. So we have something. It's a motion and a second. So move. Second. Second. Okay. Questions, comments? None. Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Okay, we have an administrative appeal hearing. Those of you who were here before understand it is a separate hearing. So, what we're going to do on the advice of council, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to do, we're going to skip the old business, new business, then adjourn this meeting, and then reopen it to the administrative appeal. Is there any old business under the development committee? Is there any new business under the development committee? I don't see any. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn the development committee? Mm -hmm. meeting? Second. Motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The development committee is adjourned. Uh, we will now adjourn that. And I don't think there's any reason to change anything. So we will move on to the administrative appeal hearing. I'll follow the administrative appeal hearing of DuPage County Board to order and roll call, please. Member Krajewski? Here. Member Chaplin? Here. Member Gustin? Here. Member Ozog? Member Rutledge? Here. Chair Tornatori? Here. And the meeting is called to order. Um, this is item 7A on your agenda, packet 23-2498. An action item, it's a request by BBBTS. The SEC 2 LLC for an appeal of the building official's decision on issuance of a new building permit under building code section 8 112.6 is exception after revocation of permit number T69474. Um, for those who may not have been here before, I'm not sure when, when this occurred before, but uh, we had an administrative appeal hearing on this same matter. Uh, we've talked to council. Uh, there's no objection to uh, Jim Strand giving us a little bit of an overview as we open up the hearing and council will present uh, the petitioner's uh, point of view on this matter and any uh, evidence they wish to present. Then uh, Jim will respond to the county's position and then we'll give the council an opportunity to rebut that uh, if uh, she feels that's necessary. So um, just a bit of an overview, historical perspective to anybody who either wasn't here or doesn't remember. Jim, I'll turn it over to you to give us kind of where we're at to get to where we are. Thank you. Good morning. So this permit was a permit that was issued in July of 2022. At the time it was issued, you, during the permitting process, there had been some litigation that was dragged the permitting process out. Uh, we were presented with a, uh, a bond receipt from the applicant as part of the permitting process from Bloomingdale Township Highway Department. That bond had expired unbeknownst to us when we issued the permit because we had it in our records. We were notified in the fall of 2022 by Bloomingdale Township that that bond had been expired and been returned um, back to the applicant. At that time, they did not meet the SAM State Section 112.6, the access drives and culverts, which requires as part of our ordinance that they provide us with either a waiver from the, town, the authority having jurisdiction of the highway in this case, the township, or a receipt of a paid bond. Uh, we were forced to then rescind the permit. We had a hearing last November. The applicant came in, asked uh, the Board of Appeals to reconsider our position. Uh, the board supported our position. We've not since then reissued the permit. Uh, they have come in with an amended application and have asked us to reevaluate it based on the exception to section 112.6, which essentially states that the permit can be uh, issued immediately in the field by personnel, and the proposed project has no impact on the access drives of the culverts, a written notarized affidavit presented by the property owner, and a cash bond or waiver will be obtained from the highway uh, jurisdiction that we can go ahead and issue the permit. We evaluated that. Our position is this is not a permit that would, that would apply to. It's a commercial permit. Uh, initial reviews, there's a stormwater certification and multiple building reviews. So we, again, denied their request. So that's why we're here today. They'd like to have that exception denial. Okay. 
So it's a, it's a second appeal of a, of a second denial. Uh, okay, counsel. Um, I assume there's no other witnesses you're going to be calling or. No, I'll just be Okay, for sure. Uh, if you identify yourself for the record, please. My name is Melanie Chico. I'm counsel for Vertical Bridge, who is the applicant in this matter. Um, as you may recall, I was here last um, last winter um, to discuss the issue of the, the uh, building permit being rescinded. Um, and just for those who may not have been here, I'll just quickly give a little bit of background on this. My client leased land from MSVL um, to build a cell tower. And as part of that, they need to build a construction road from the cell tower site to um, Spring Valley Drive and Glendale Road. Um, so this is routine pro forma access drive permit to be able to move equipment in and out to, for the construction purposes, a right that every citizen has. The county, as Mr. Strand said, had revoked the building permit based on the lack of a township access permit, which it claimed was a prerequisite to the building permit. Note that that building permit had been issued after Vertical Bridge had already submitted extensive engineering submittals to the county, which were reviewed and approved by the various departments. Initially, the township had issued the access permit in one day and accepted a $500 bond. It then changed positions after some um, citizens lost a lawsuit. They had challenged the validity, validity of the lease. The court had dismissed that case. Then all of a sudden, the, the township told Vertical Bridge, actually, we're claiming we own this area where you wanna build this construction road. And so you need to enter into a lease with the township and then that would need to be put up for um, a, a vote of the citizens. Um, the township then began refusing to submit any further application or, or um, any um, bond from, from Vertical Bridge. So that was where we were back in the winter. And, and I just want to point out a few developments that are ha have happened since. Um, earlier this year in 2023, the county updated its GIS map to show that this easement area where the township is claiming ownership is part of lot 171, which would make it part of the land that Vertical Bridge is, is leasing. So the county's own GIS map has been updated to reflect that this is not corporate property of the township. This is private property, which is being leased pursuant to a lease that has already been upheld to Vertical Bridge. In March, Vertical Bridge tried to give it another shot with the township, resubmitted for um, an access permit, and the township issued a, a decision. And there were a few important points of this. Um, Although the township again wrongly asserted that it owned this, this area, this, this easement area, even though it's, it's an easement, um, they did set out some conditions where they would be fine with, with the plans. One was that there would be a bond of $7,500 required. The second one was that the, the township stated in its decision that it would approve the access permit so long as Vertical Bridge basically went another route that did not cross this 66 foot easement over which the township is claiming ownership. This is important because the county's position is that the real dispute here is the little bit of area that's in between the easement area and the, the public roadway. So that little culvert section. But the township is not claiming that that's an issue. So that's really what the basis of the county's decision in terms of denying the exception is, is that, well, no, you need, you need permission from the township to, to go over that part. But that, as of the decision of the township, that's not the issue that they're raising. So Vertical Bridge then requested that the county apply this exception based on these new developments. Um, and the other thing I wanna point out as part of that package, Vertical Bridge submitted evidence that it did in fact post the $7,500 bond to the township. Um, it submitted two affidavits, uh, provided the full building permit package, um, which had already been approved by the county. There was just a, a minor change, which is that the road is gonna be constructed out of asphalt instead of gravel. It's my understanding, although you know, I'll let the county tell me differently, but that 
they're not going to require a whole new reevaluation of, of that package. So it's, it's the same plan. The township isn't raising an issue regarding the small right away. All they're doing is throwing up a roadblock by falsely claiming ownership. The county has the discretion to go ahead and ignore that based on the, the facts and its own GIS map and grant the exception and, and go ahead and reissue this, this building permit. Um, thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Jim, did you want to respond on behalf of the county to? Sure. Yeah. I, I believe our position from the building department all along has been the ownership of lot 171, the county's not taking a position on. That's a, it's a, a case that's occurring between Vertical Ridge and the township. Our ordinance requires, if you were going to be doing any sort of work that would require a culvert or at work in the road right of way, we need to have a bond receipt or a waiver from the authority having jurisdiction for that right of way, which we don't have. They have submitted that they have paid $7,500 as requested by the township, but the township still has not issued any document to us that says we've received $7,500 and here's a receipt for it. Here's your bond. Um, so at this point, I, I feel that we are still in the same situation. We're only focused on the road right of way. We're not focused on who owns lot 171 and where they want to put their access road. It is an issue of leaving the pavement to your property line, whoever owns that property. And that's the area that requires the township right away permit. So we don't have that. And there's one additional uh, statutory authority that I want the members to be aware of, and that's section 9-113 of the Illinois Highway Code, which says that no ditches, drains, tracks, which would include gravel or asphalt roadways, rails, poles, wires, pipeline, or other equipment of any public utility company, public or private corporation, association, or purpose, person shall be located, placed, or constructed upon, under, or along any highway or upon any township or district road without first obtaining the written consent of the appropriate highway authority as hereafter provided in this section. Okay. Council, do you have anything else you wish to add? Um, just again, as I stated in, in the decision that the township is not raising an issue with respect to vertical bridge crossing over the right of way or um, the, the culvert and whatever you want to call it. That, that's not their, their problem here. Um, so the exception should apply. Thank you. Okay. Um, so as, as I understand it, we have the amended application asking for a permit from the county based on an exception. The exception would be granted if in fact the access permit or approval would be granted by the authority in question, in this case, the township. Um, Jim's statement, we have not received, the county has not received that. Am I correct, Jim? That's correct. Uh, nor any uh, evidence of the $7,500 bond uh, received. Notwithstanding, I don't disbelieve council's suggestion that it was paid we just don't have a receipt that shows it so under our code the exception wouldn't apply is that your position jim the county's that, position that is correct okay jim really quickly can you explain the position as to why the exception can't apply under these circumstances well primarily the exception for me it starts at the very first sentence of it is permits that can be issued immediately on site by field personnel where proposed projects will not impact an access drive and or culvert this is not a project that that pertains to the nature of this project is as i stated previously it had three stormwater reviews so clearly not able to be issued immediately three building reviews that it went through again it's a cell tower structural and engineers have to look at this multiple jurisdictions had to look at it, the highway the fire department the building zoning and and stormwater as well so i don't believe that the exception applies uh, council wants to go to the part where they provide us notarized affidavits and, and say that they have paid a fee for the bond but 
it's not a permit that is by its nature can be admitted to can be issued immediately by staff. So I because there would be some impact. There would be some impact and there'd be multiple reviews. Okay. Um, we have a question. Uh, I just want to make sure we still have a quorum. Okay. We do. Yeah, we do. Okay. Yes. So my clear understanding. So we did all the reviews on the first and we issued the permit. We did. And but we had to rescind the permit because the bond. Bond expired. Right. So we have expired. So Three. then yes. Now, so nothing's changed except gravel and asphalt. Um, we just have to make sure we have a bond. And I think you said I, I thought I heard you say we didn't have any evidence. Did they submit the seventy five hundred dollar payment? Or was it notarized? They have provided us affidavits saying that they would not start the work until they received their, their bond. They have submitted payment to the, the township. But we know that. For fact. Yes, they provided okay. documentation so they, for that. Which is what they need. So nothing's really changed except, I mean, assuming we have the bond, are we going to, the system we get, will we just put it through the same review that they already did once with the same exact, because it's not changed. Nothing's changed. We would just reissue the permit. But to be, well, we wouldn't to be, send it back to stormwater. To, no, we wouldn't need to do that. To be clear, they have they have submitted that they have paid the township, but the township has not provided us with any documentation saying we have issued a bond or we have issued a waiver. I need something from the township that says they paid us. They here's the bond. Here's the receipt for it. And, 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 yeah. They're in litigation. We're waiting to hear from them. It's up to the township to issue it. What do you say? We're in litigation? They're in litigation currently with the township. Oh, the township and that one? Correct. But if you, so when you ask them if, if they can give us the bot, they just won't answer your question? I have not asked the township if they will issue it. it based it's, upon it's, it's township's jurisdiction to issue. Yeah. It is the township's jurisdiction to decide whether or not to issue or an approved bond and access permit. County well, doesn't have the power. get it once. I'm exactly saying. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you, Sam. So if we issue this, reissue the permit, mm -hmm. we're not really in any kind of a different position than we are. We're still waiting for the township to approve this. Yes. So it doesn't really hurt their case or help their case for us to reissue the permit. They're still going to have the battle with the township. They'll continue their issues with the township. Our, our position again is that they don't, the exception doesn't apply. Uh, this is not a permit that can be immediately issued. It does affect the right, right of way at a culvert. So the position that the county staff has taken is that the, we're having a building board of appeals to hear if you agree with my reading of the exception, in which case, then we would not, be, you would support us and we would not be able to issue the permit. It's very articulate there, but <laughs> I think you know what I'm trying to say. Number sure. chair. Okay, just simply put, um, is this, okay. Because we do not have a bond from Bloomingdale, we cannot issue the permit. Correct. Okay. And until we get the bond from Bloomingdale, once we get the bond from Bloomingdale, we could issue the permit. We will absolutely reissue the permit. Okay. So we we're just waiting for Bloomingdale to issue the permit. And and there are issues with Bloomingdale, so it might be a, until they figure that out then. Correct. And what, yeah. And if, yeah. Okay. And the bond and the, for the excess permit is a condition Correct. to the exception. Issuance of the building. And you permit. just read a statute that said that we're required by Illinois statute to await consent from the highway authority, basically having jurisdiction yeah. over the roadway before we can issue a building permit. Yeah. Any so other? We did receive consent once. That consent is no longer effective. That's just It's pretty quick. Any other questions? Any other questions or comments? Um, regarding this. Okay, so we have a, an action item, which is essentially a, a request uh, to appeal uh, our building officials' decision uh, to deny the building permit under our building code. So 
I will entertain a motion to, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do a motion to grant or deny the appeal. So again, so we do everything in the affirmative. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to grant the appeal of Vertical Bridge. Is there a motion? So moved. For a second. It's a motion and a second to grant the appeal. Um, obviously, a yes vote here would be to grant the appeal, overturn the county's decision. Uh, a no vote would be to deny the appeal and uh, sustain uh, the county's position. Uh, roll call, please. Member Rutledge. No. Member Chaplin. No. Member Kajewski. No. Chair Tornatore. No. And the appeal is denied. Uh, thank you, Council. Thank you, John. Thank you, Attorney. Um, we have nothing else under the administrative appeal. Uh, any other business under that? that? Being said, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the administrative Second. appeal. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The administrative appeal hearing is adjourned. Thank you.